It was a sound so terrible, it seemed to scare the world into silence for an instant. The wind stopped, a cloud passed over the sun. Kofi stopped praying and spun round. Where had it come from? Was it behind him or in front? He could not tell. Wednesday, 5th of June, 2005. Kenya, the beating heart of Africa. This story takes place in the dry plains of central Kenya, under the shadow of the majestic Mount Kenya, second highest peak in the African continent. A notorious wilderness, these hot lands are home to one of the most diverse animal populations in the world. Prides of lions and deadly crocodiles lurk among the waterholes, while large herds of zebra and buffalo crisscross the terrain in search of safety and shade. It's a world of hidden dangers and desperate battles, where the long grassland thrills with the buzz of crickets and the hum of birdsong, while dense clouds roll across the horizon, making the air thick with the promise of summer storms. The day of the attack. Seemingly just another day for 76-year-old local man Kofi Malangu. Kofi was busy farming potatoes in his vegetable patch, not far from his village, when it happened. The sun was hot on his back, and he was already exhausted from the day's labors. With his trusty machete, he hacked away at the yellowing weeds that threatened to choke his precious potato plants. His old bones ached, and he could feel a crunch in his knees whenever he bent to pull a root. He had been working for hours with little water or shade, and was beginning to feel dizzy and disoriented, when suddenly he noticed something was wrong. He could no longer hear the birds. Kofi had lived in the Kenyan bush his whole life, and he knew the characteristics of his homeland. He knew that the birds should be singing on a normal afternoon like this. He knew also that there were dangerous things out there that could hurt or even kill him if he wasn't careful. Suddenly, Kofi felt very alone and afraid for his life. He stopped his weeding and gripped the machete hard. All around him, the wind was rippling the long grass. Kofi thought he saw shapes moving just out of sight. He heard the snap of a twig, the creep of soft footsteps on the parched ground. There was no sound at all apart from the wind. Even the crickets had stopped chirping. Kofi's heart was pounding. He imagined he could taste his own fear in his mouth. It was a bitter flavor. It was in this moment that Kofi did something remarkable. Instead of running for his life through the treacherous grasslands back to the safety of his village, he clasped both of his hands together on his chest and he began to pray. Kofi had been a religious man ever since he was a boy, and even sometimes he felt like God was speaking directly to him. This was one of those times. He felt like God was testing him. People said that God did that sometimes, to prove the will and the strength and the goodness of man. He thought that maybe this was all just a dreadful illusion. Maybe there was nothing in the long grass, nothing except the devil himself. Suddenly, he heard a deep growl. It was a sound so terrible, it seemed to scare the world into silence for an instant. The wind stopped. A cloud passed over the sun. Kofi stopped praying and spun round. Where had it come from? Was it behind him or in front? He could not tell. He heard the growl again, low and fierce. Was it behind that patch of grass? He swung wildly with his machete, hitting nothing. Suddenly, he saw it. A leopard, beautiful and terrible. Its fur was the color of burnt sand, and he could see the rippling muscles beneath its ragged pelt. It leapt out of the long grass with glistening teeth ready to sink into his throat. Kofi felt a dread so deep it overcame every nerve in his body, and he knew that this was the moment of his death charging toward him. Just at that moment, time seemed to stand perfectly still and Kofi heard a voice. It was a voice unlike any he'd heard before, clear and crisp as the morning light. 
it was very gently in his ears. Drop the machete. This was crazy, the absolute opposite of Kofi's instinct, which was to swing madly with the weapon as the animal slammed into him. But in that terrible instant, he knew that his weapon was no match for a fully grown ferocious leopard, and as he did so, he heard the voice again, soft and clean as before. Put your hand in the leopard's mouth. This time, Kofi was overcome with amazement. Again, the voice was telling him to do something which went against every human survival reflex. As the snarling leopard reared up on its hind legs, Kofi felt doubt and fear swirling through every fiber in his body, but in the end, he obeyed the voice again. He thrust his fist forward right into the gaping jaws of the beast. At first, the deadly creature seemed surprised, as if it couldn't imagine its prey would be so welcoming. Then its eyes contracted in a spasm of pain, and Kofi realized that he had the creature's soft tongue between his fingers. Frantically, he pulled on the tongue, and the leopard howled in anger, biting down on Kofi's wrist. Blood poured from the wounds made by the animal's teeth, and blackness flashed across Kofi's vision. This truly was a struggle for life and death. For five agonized minutes, Kofi fought with the leopard. The creature threw its full weight against him as it howled in pain. He felt its huge paws and sharp talons slamming and cutting into him in a frantic struggle. The two figures wrestled each other, man against beast, outlined by the giant African sky. The birds and the crickets were still silent, and even the long stems of the potato plants seemed to lean toward the pair. It was as if the whole world was an attentive audience holding its breath before this heroic battle. Kofi hovered on the edge of consciousness. He wanted desperately to give up. Black spots kept blinding his eyes. The leopard's shrieks tore through his ears. Again and again, the beast bit down on his hand, crunching bones and spurting blood. Its paw slashed his shirt to pieces, cutting long, intense gashes through his skin. Its eyes were like two terrible balls of fire, scorching into him. He wanted nothing more than to curl into a ball and let the leopard win. But he thought about his village and the voice in his head. He fought on. Suddenly, something happened. He could feel the leopard's tongue tearing free from the beast's mouth. He could feel the warm blood between his fingers that wasn't his. He knew, on some level, that he was winning. Maybe, the voice told him, maybe he saw it in the leopard's yellow eyes. Whatever it was, he knew he just had to hold on. Hold on. And eventually, it happened. With a shriek unlike anything Kofi had ever heard, the leopard's tongue came loose from its body. He'd ripped it clean out of its mouth. Red gore drenched the dusty ground, gushing from the limp tongue. The big cat seemed to sway for a moment, confused and angry. Its prey had become its predator. The fire in its eyes burned bright for a few more seconds, and then it fell down hard in the dust. Still growling softly, it clawed at its limp mouth and began to die. Not angry anymore, or afraid, but simply accepting that the end was coming. It had played the game of hunting, and it had lost. Such is the way in the wilderness of Africa. Kofi stood, holding his trophy, tired in every muscle of his body, giving thanks to the voice, to God. He knew his village would call him a hero for this. He thought they may even sing songs about him, but right now, he did not feel like a hero. He felt lucky and a bit sad for the beautiful dying leopard. Kofi stood for many minutes staring at the sky until the birds began to sing again, and he smiled.